about Faker by Gordon Corman. It was released uh, on like I think around July 3rd uh, and I read it. It's a real page turner. Um, I loved it and um, yeah today I, I, I want to talk about a few questions um, that I thought of while I was reading the book um, and let's dive right in. So I'm just gonna give you a short summary just in case. So um, Trey um, you know his, Trey's dad runs a swindling scam. He goes from town to town, um, yeah, swindling people, making them invest in things that don't exist, from uh, fake diamonds to um, show dogs. Um, and now, after a while, and you know, every single time they move, they change their names. Pat, they have to get new passports and IDs. Um, they, you know, they're always on the run from the law. They constantly have to lie. Trey's job is to make friends so that his parent so that his dad can um swindle them because his and he and Trey has to choose has to find out who the rich kids are so that his dad can swindle their parents. Um and so this book caught my eye. One because it's a Gordon Corman book. And if it's a Gordon Corman book, chances are not one, 10 out of 10, it's actually going to be an amazing book. Yeah, the always. It's always going to be an amazing book. Gordon Corman writes amazingly. Um, you know, uh, his writing skills are unparalleled, and I really enjoyed every single novel that he has written so far. Um, and so, Faker was no exception. Read it really quickly. I loved it. And then afterward, yeah. This is why afterward I thought that there were some interesting ethical issues that we could talk about um, from the book. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and also the idea is totally unique. A family um, who com who commits crime, that's something that hasn't been around. And that's another great um, that's another great thing about Gordon Corman's books. They're always original. Um, their ideas are amazing. And so, one question I have is, do you think that the fact that their marks or victims are rich, do you think that that makes it right? Um, and so this is the first ethical issue. And so, um, so as um, was in Mr. Novak's class, I'm sorry if I didn't say Mr. I actually finished the book a few, uh, like a week ago and I, for and I forgot the last name of the teacher. Um, I am very, I'm 100% sure, and like 90% sure it's Mr. Novak, the social studies teacher um, and Kaylee's dad. Um, and so, you know, in his class, right, they're starting an ethics unit and they're talking about all sorts of, you know, ethical problems, what you, you, you would do in this or that situation. Um, and so today I'm just gonna kind of structure like that these are all ethical questions um and then after we do that i'm gonna finish off with an exciting new up announcement on a gordon corman book that i've heard about on um and so anyway uh first yeah doesn't does the fact that they're rich the victims are rich does that make it more right i don't think so the reason is because well it might have just uh, it might have less of an impact, but I still do think that it's the same level of crime as um, as stealing from a poor person. Yeah, you, know, you might say, well, still, yeah, sure, uh, but still, right? I mean, but while it might not have uh, that much of an impact, I, I still think that actually, no matter what, it's the same because that rich person worked really hard to get that money, right? Um, like, for example, Elon Musk, right? Uh, or, nah, I don't know, a anybody, even Jeff Bezos, uh, any billionaire, right? Um, and you, and, you know, the, right now, they're rolling in money, right? Um, and they 
they have it much easier than like than a regular person, right? Yet they all worked really hard to found their companies, to be the CEO of co their companies, making sure that their companies succeeded. You know, even tough times that requires a lot of grit and resilience. And I think, I and I think that yeah, they deserve the money. And so if you steal it, I think that 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 it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, however, yeah, um, yeah. And so I think that the fact that their marks are rich doesn't really make a difference. I think it's the same stealing. There's no difference in that. So yeah. Just because they steal from rich people doesn't make the crime any less terrible. Um, and so I just want to focus on Trey's father for a moment. Um, you know, so his, or Junior, right? Uh, and so Trey's dad, um, he is he a criminal or a caring dad? I mean, he didn't really give his children a choice in what lifestyle they wanted to lead, right? Um, but at the same time, that al that allowed him to put food on the table and enabled them to live in, a, you know, actually okay lifestyle, right? Going on vacations um, between operations when they have to lie low for a while, lie low for a while. Um, you know, they go to resorts and they must, and you know, Trey has sent to private school. Of course, that's part of the business, but still, right? It, they also live in pretty nice houses. Um, it, it, it's actually an okay, it's a pretty good lifestyle. I mean, of, not a lifestyle, that's terrible, but like, if you're thinking about it from like a point of view that does not really distinguish between bad and good, and like, you know, like evil and good, I mean, the lifestyle itself is okay but at the same time at the same time they they're constantly on the run constantly fearing that the cops are going to catch up to them they have to change names multiple times leave friends behind and they're always lying to people and this and you know he didn't really give them a choice at all right with him around they're bound to be swindlers they're bound to be like him and do you think that Trey's father put them at a disadvantage when he became a swindler? Do you think that he has the right to do this to them? Um, and so I'm not saying does he have the right to do this to his, um, to his, uh, you know, to the people who he swindles, his victims. I'm saying if, let's say what he does is like, you know, legal. But you know the cops are chasing you, um, and okay, fine, fine, fine. it's illegal. But let's not think about that as like a bad thing, okay? Let's just leave that behind. But still, the cops are chasing after you, and you're gonna become a bad person as well because of Trey's dad, right? Um, I mean, sure, the children are happy, but still, they are constantly on the run. They you have to give up their family. I mean, they're friends all the all the time, right? Um, they don't really have a home or a mom. So yeah, what do you think? Do you think that Trey's dad has any right to do this? But do you think they're old enough to make the choice as well? Um, but then again, like from when on did they get to make that choice? Because from when they were a little kid, before they knew what was really right and wrong, they were already agreeing to it. Agreeing to it, so that was their only chance to say no, kind of, right? Before they really got immersed into that lifestyle. So all I want you to really consider about this is about Trey's dad, what he did. Was he, I mean, sure, he goes to great lengths to put food on the table. He's I mean, he's a he's an okay. He's a good dad, right? Um. He's never mean, right, or anything. He doesn't keep secrets. Um, and he makes sure that, yeah, to, you know, to his kids, he's a good person. But still, what do you think? Do you think Trey's father is a good person or a bad person overall? And do you think that somebody can be good and bad at the same time? Is that possible? Because is Trey innocent? Is he a good person? Because sure, 
he stood up against his dad. And that is a sign of being a good person. But at the same time, he has been part of the family business for years, right? He has been part of the family business since he could remember, like, when he was, like, in kindergartner. When he was a kindergartner, right? Um, and, he, and even that he knew perfectly well what they were doing. They were swingling. Swingling, um, and he, he just, yeah, he knew exactly what was happening. Um, he chose the rich kids, and he made sure that nobody found out about it. Um, and yeah, but at the same time, Trey didn't really have any much of a choice. And from when he was a kid, this was a lifestyle that he led. So, I mean, he wouldn't have really thought of it as bad. But still, is Trey innocent? Because from a point on, you know, he still... He's grown up enough to know, you know, he's swindling people and he feels bad about it. So yeah, what do you think? Is because of his dad, is Trey innocent? Because, you know, his dad um, kind of made him do it. In the eyes of the law, that would be what would happen, right? Trey is still a minor. But we're not the law. We're just people who are looking and reading the book. And if so, is Trey innocent? What do you think about that? Um, I mean, he did play a part. In fact, he played a major part. Without him, that business would be non-existent because he, because he is the one who finds the rich kids and with the rich kids, he finds the rich parents. Um, and without that, the job would be much harder, right? Um, uh, and... Now, um, now that we've talked a bit about this, about Trey's situation, um, one thing I, I want to focus on are, you know, the uh, actual ethical dilemmas that were talked about in um, the social studies class, right? Um, in Trey's social studies class. Um, so there's Robin Hood, right? Is Robin Hood right in stealing for the poor? poor? <laughs> uh, and then there is um, Aladdin, which is another ethical dilemma. And there, should Al Aladdin have stolen bread? Or should they have done something else? Um, and so, let's start with Robin Hood first. Um, what do you think? Robin Hood steals from the rich and gives to the poor. What, what, how do you think that this is? And of course, different circumstances mean different, you know, things, right? Like, if the rich are, like, bad people, then yeah. But if they're, like, innocent people who haven't done anything at all... I mean, no, right? Robin Hood should not give to them. Because, I mean, they have no moral obligation. They don't really, they don't have to give to the poor, right? So, yeah, what well, Robin Hood will be doing, like, I mean, you don't have to give them money, the poor money, right? Um, if you're, like, a, a rich person. Um, and so if you think about it that way, yeah, Robin, what Robin is doing is a crime. But at the same time... Robin is helping people in need, and that's important. So, what do you think about that? Personally, I think that if the, if the rich are, like, just decent people, I think that Robin Hood should not steal. Just because, I mean... Sure, it would be nice if the rich gave to the poor. But at the same time, they aren't... They don't have to do that. Nobody has to give anybody else money. But what if they were bad? What if they were bad? Um, they were cruel. Then would Robin Hood, then should Robin Hood steal? At that point, I definitely think that he should. Because, well, if they're bad to the villagers, and they're poor, and you know, they're using their social status as something to, as a weapon, then they should not have that social status. Because they're, because, or at least it should be fine. And this is their fine. And you can think about it like that. Um, and so that's how I feel. But what about you? What, how do you feel about this? Is Robin Hood right or is he wrong? Um, and then there's Aladdin. Should Aladdin have stolen bread? And this is really similar to Trey's situation. Bring us back to the story, right? Um, and so, um, Aladdin steals some bread. And, you know, um, oh man. Now that I'm thinking about Aladdin... Uh, I now have a song stuck in my head from Aladdin, but 
no matter um that, that's not important um so Elias steals his bread you know he doesn't have money he you know the rich people regard him as um like riffraff right um and he's treated really unfairly the social system the hierarchy is tight is watertight it's hard to move up the ranks and the people at the bottom like aladdin who was unfortunately an orphan well unfortunately yeah the other people the people higher up would abuse them um they would be cruel to them they would and you know they didn't really have any opportunity in life and so if you think about it that way i mean that should not be happening but at the same time stealing is bad it's against the law and if aladdin really you know aladdin could still get a job sure at his position he would get a very unfair low paying job but he could still get a job and then earn his living honestly he could earn his living honestly and then he could buy his, the bread and other things without stealing um but at the same time if you watch the movie um or like read the book uh then you know that Aladdin is in a really disadvantaged position. And since that should not be, since the law has an obligation to, um, you know, to make sure that p the people at the, low, at the lowest level should still be taken care of, I feel that Aladdin has the right to steal. But he shouldn't be like, like, like you know, be stealing lavishly, just the things that he needs to survive just enough so that he can feed himself but if there's an opportunity for him to do okay work at an okay at, with an okay salary then i think that stealing any more would be wrong because now he has a chance um that's what i think um and finally you know trey is kind of like aladdin well but i you know, um, he steals from the rich, um, and, um, when he does so, you know, he's doing it to support his family. But do you think that Trey's and Aladdin's situations are similar? I mean, the same? Do you think, who, who do you think, do you think that Trey should steal if you look at it that way? No, because Trey, in this world in this modern world people have a, a lot more opportunities but i guess it's not trey it's more like trey's dad but anyway the laws are fairer um there's more ways for poor people to become millionaires um or at least um you know rich right um if trey's dad actually gets a job then i mean he could actually you know their family could live in a they can live in a, a much better way um maybe they won't be raking in millions of dollars but they will still be happier they don't have to run around um you know lying they can stay in one place and they can be happy and i think that that's what's most important um about about this and so i think that that's my general thought so Think about these more ethical, these ethical dilemmas. There are a lot of interesting ones out there. Um, and yeah, overall, now that you've thought about it, just think, who do you think is most to blame? And uh, do you think that Trey's father really is to blame? Because it's not like he says, I mean, sure. Right now, Trey kind of has no choice but to join the schemes, but what about later on? Trey can join once, once he goes. Can he? Or do you think that he's kind he will have to become a swindler himself? And um yeah, what do you think about that? And uh finally, to cap this off, I wanna talk about the next Gordon Corman book that's probably gonna hit the shelves in I think around 2025. And so um I wanna get the exact name of it. Um it's called Old School, and um, the cover is coming soon, and it's going to be released in January 2025, and it seems to be really fun. And so, the description of the book um, actually um, tells you a lot of stuff. It seems fun, 
Um, and if you do not want spoilers, then I'll see you next time. Uh, bye. And if you do want spoilers, they're not like enormous spoilers. They don't tell you like what happens afterwards. They just tell you the beginning situation. And so um, here, okay. Quote, Dexter Foreman is 12, going on 80. He has lived at the Pies Retirement Village with his grandmother since he was six years old. And as a result, he gets along better with senior citizens than kids his own age. He's been homeschooled by the residents up until the day the, co the county's transit officer shows up and announces that Dex has to go to the local middle school. At school, Dex st sticks out like a sore th thumb. He dresses like a grandpa and can be just as cranky. His taste in movies and music is decades out of date. Only a few students, like Gianna Greco, a reporter at the school's newspaper, find him intriguing. For most, he is a weirdo or a target. Unquote. Um, and now, that's how it's going to um, un unfold. You can find out more uh, at Amazon. Th this is where I read it out from, by the way. Uh, and currently, the cover has not come out yet. But I think that, again, it's going to be a Gordon Corman classic. It's going to be something that's definitely going to be a hit when it reaches the bookshelves. Um, I'll see you next time. I am thinking about making one of these videos for Amari and the Despicable Wonders or Amari Book 3 by B.B. Alston. And I'll see you then. Bye! Thank you.